How's it going guys? What you'll see today on popular request will be basically me showing you tips and tricks today on improving your infantry aiming in Battlefield 4. Uh, this one will be part of a new series I'm going to start which is basically giving you tips and tricks with regard to infantry gameplay. Today I'll be aiming. Uh, I'll include more in-depth videos in the future with regard to situational approaches like how you're supposed to enter a doorway, what you should do if someone's behind the doorway, corner, cornering, pillaring, all sorts of that stuff that all the pros out there quote unquote like to use. Uh, but what I'll do on top of that as well is I'll, uh, I'll save minimap awareness, situational awareness and more in-depth ones. It'll probably be 10 minute videos on their own for future ones. But today will be specifically about aiming and of course if you want to see something in general let me know in the comments. So let's get started. Oh, wait, actually, before we let me get started, just popped in my head. This one's going to be more about infantry tips, less so towards sniping because I've already done sniping tutorials. So if you want to see spe sniping specific tutorials, I have one on my main page. Go check that one out. That one will help you the most. First things first with regard to infantry here, controls or key bindings are absolutely vital to your success. If you don't have these under control and you don't actually feel comfortable using them, you might as well pull the plug on the game and stop trying because, well... You'll never reach your peak as a player. You have to be comfortable. You have to find what works for you. The other thing too, on top of that, if you if you don't like something I say or something Level Cap Gaming suggest, suggests, for example, don't use it. If Use what works for you. You don't have to use what your favorite YouTuber suggests. But that being said, uh, your favorite YouTuber's probably gone through the trials and tribulations of what works and what doesn't work. So there's a good chance that if they're giving you information, then it's probably information they've tested out in multiple different variants and ways. So it's probably good information. But again, depends on the source, depends on the person. With regard to console, I'd, I'd always use the older legacy controls because I'm most familiar with those and I've had great success with that in the past personally. Uh, but if you're more used to the newer controls that just came out for Battlefield 4, don't change them back to the legacy. Use what works for you. Uh, on PC, I make sure... Because I'm playing on BC now, I make sure that my primary and secondary switch uh, buttons are bound to the, the side mouse buttons. Uh, and the reason for that is so that I can sw quickly switch between primary and secondary weapons if I get in a bind of running out of ammo or something of that sort. Uh, and I make sure that my primary equipment slot is bound to the middle mouse button click. And like I said, the reason for that is just so that I'm able to switch between them quickly with little to no effort of trying to find the buttons. I know where they are. It's not a problem. So if you're caught in a bind or a surprise, no real issue. Just click the button. I know a lot of different people, and it is literally life and death, but I know a lot of different people who bind uh, their mouse or their uh, the weapon switch and equipment switches to their keyboard. And again, that's fine. If they have success, that's fine. But for me, I don't like it. I don't like doing it that way, so I don't. Uh, but the whole thing you should get out of the key, the controls is experiment what works for you. Find what you think is most comfortable and reliable. And the next point, of course, going based on that same point of comfort and reliability is sensitivity. And I'll, I'll talk about this more specifically. Some people like a lower sensitivity that allows you to see maybe an at max 180 degree angle turn from where you're looking straight ahead. For example, you can see your left shoulder, your right shoulder, and everything in that field of view. Uh, and again, the you the good the, the, with the lower sensitivity i mean you basically have to have a large movement of your control stick or your mouse to continually move from say your left shoulder to your right shoulder's field of view the quote unquote pros again i, I say that uh suggest to use this because it allows for a much more precise control and movement over smaller areas but the cons to it are basically exactly that same point if you're on say you're, if say you're looking over toward an area would, where your left shoulder would be, if an enemy pops up on the right and you're not completely aware that he was in your field of view, you're pretty much done. Because, I mean, good luck trying on that small sensitivity to move over that quickly. You don't have a chance to make the adjustment. Uh, and the other con too is you'll probably, if you're playing on PC, you'll probably need a really large mouse pad and a great deal of situational awareness to, put, to avoid putting yourself in those situations to begin with. So what you're sacrificing is basically extreme precision or you're getting extreme precision for a lack of an ability to adjust to a circumstance if you're not uh, having that higher sensitivity. Others like me, because I've never been part of the crowd per se, I've always, uh, I don't know, I've, a lot of my preferences have been very different from the crowd uh, throughout my life. But with regard to playing with the sensitivity, I've always been able to 
I've always liked that ability to turn 180 degrees quickly with a short movement of a mouse or a control stick because silly as it's going to sound and I don't like using the term, it gives sort of a real life feel to it. It makes me feel like if I was holding a rifle myself, would I like the ability to turn from left shoulder to right shoulder extremely quickly? And that answer is yes. Uh, and again, the 180 degree quick turn approach gives you the ability, like I said, to turn quickly and cover more area quickly, but again, it has its cons as well because you sacrifice that extreme precision and smaller movement that a lot of the people with the slower sensitivity use. Uh, this, get, But uh, the pros to it and why I'd suggest using it if you're just starting out is that if you get used to this higher sensitivity and, and you need a lot of practice to do it, it gives you the best of both worlds. In situations where someone will be shooting at me and I'm not even paying attention to them, if I'm quick enough in the reaction time, I can get away with getting kills in circumstances that... I should probably have been killed, or that a lower sensitivity would absolutely have gotten me killed. Uh, so it's it's a good practice situation. My personal preference with mouse sensitivity are 2000 DPI for the mouse and a 20% in-game sensitivity for both vehicles and for uh, infantry controls. Uh, and again, when I was on console, my sensitivity was always around the one-third bar, th one bar on the sensitivity bar for Battlefield 3. Uh, I never change it regardless of whether or not I'm sniping infantry or in vehicles and I've had tons of success with it because changing around your sensitivities I find for the most part is just one more way to confuse your muscle memory. It's even more training you have to go through and forget it. Just stick with one, go through the trials and tribulations and trust me you'll see great improvement quickly. Uh, additionally, with regard to covering mouse acceleration for PC users, when I first started gaming on PC I left it on and I continue to leave it on. It's, it's more of a preference. If you're not sure what mouse acceleration is really quickly, if you basically want your crosshair to move as far as your mouse moves, regardless how fast you move your, uh, your mouse, you want to leave it off. If you want your crosshair to move uh, farther, if you move your mouse faster, you want to leave it on. Uh, I've personally always, like I said, been different from the crowd, so a lot of people suggest to turn it off. Uh, but anyone who tells you you should turn it off or you can't have success with it on, don't bother listening to them. I've, I leave it on, and as you guys see most of my videos that I post all the time, I don't really have any trouble. just takes more practice to get used to the fact that that little bit of a mouse deviation or how fast you move the mouse will move your crosshair faster, but it's not a big concern. You can absolutely have success with it, with it on. Uh, the next point, uh, this is just a general tip for aiming. When I'm basically traversing forward throughout the map, regardless of whether I'm going, uh, I, I basically try to center my crosshair to where I believe the targets will be. Not necessarily center it exactly toward the center of the screen or toward the center horizon. Like say I'm walking down the hallway, I don't always have it directly down the center of the hallway at all times. I might focus it directly toward the right side corner figuring an enemy's going to come around that corner. So if I focus my crosshair there, I'll have a much higher probability of hitting him right on the draw. So trust me, it helps. Uh, I see far too many people on average centering the crosshair directly in the middle and then they have to make that small compensation when the threat pops up. So I'd say a general tip with regard to aiming before we even start is just to point it directly where you think the enemy will be. Uh, the next thing with regard to aiming is once you actually decide to go through and set up all of these things I just talked about, once you pick a weapon, make sure you know its strengths and weaknesses before you even start. Uh, if you know it has a fast fire rate, it's in general, it's probably going to be harder to control, but it'll be a monster in close quarters situations. Or if it's a slower fire rate, but uh, it'll probably be a laser beam over longer, medium and longer ranges. Uh, if you want more uh, in-depth stats about it, Simthic.com, and I'll leave a link to it, uh, lists weapon stats. And of course, I have tons of reviews listing pros and cons if you want to see reviews of weapons as they go. And leave a request if you want to see specific weapons reviewed as well. The next thing you should know is to know your range that you're getting into. Uh, based on the weapon you're using, like I alluded to earlier, uh, it, they go well together. Longer ranges will be diff more difficult to hit on average. You should tap or burst fire with any weapon, of course, minus a sniper rifle because you don't have the choice to, with two to three round bursts or less of the trigger over longer ranges. Anything more than that will not only increase your spread, but it'll also in increase your recoil control difficulty. Tap firing, which is uh, repeated uh, firing, basically just tapping on the mouse or tapping on the trigger to fire, uh, basically 
well, but basically you just, you click the mouse, you let go, you click the mouse, or tap, tap, tap on the mouse, tap, tap, tap on the trigger. It, you basically fire in one to two round bursts, repeatedly releasing between is the best way to not only reduce spread, but reduce horizontal and vertical recoil. If you choose to go full auto or mag dump, you'll have to counter the direction of the recoil. So for example, say I know a weapon has a horizontal recoil to the left, you'll want to aim slightly down and to the left, but I say slightly because you want to aim to the equivalent of bringing your crosshair back to where the origin point before you started firing were. Holding down and to the right in this case to counter a horizontal left recoil is basically just going to put it diagonally too far to the right than where you started. Uh, and I'll show you an example in the video. Uh, medium range is a judgment call based on where you are and depending on the weapon. A low fire rate weapon like the AK-5C or SCAR-H you can almost automatically full out of the weapon without penalty but again tap or burst fire is your best bet. With regard to shorter range you don't have to worry so much about tap or burst fire because you can mag dump with no, without issue here because the spread won't be an issue at this range. Uh, if you're within about 10 meters or so of, you, of your enemy Especially if you if you have a fast fire rate weapon with the laser sight equipped, it's actually better for you to hip fire instead of actually going and aiming down the sights. Because if you're aiming down the sights, not only are you losing time between the actual point where you're hip firing and scoping in, but if you're already being hit by bullets, your sight will flinch or your your player will flinch, which means your sight will go haywire, which means target acquisition will be a shit ton more difficult. In addition to this. Besides shorter range encounters, and by shorter range I mean maybe 10 meters or less or so, do not try to shoot on the move. An ergonom ergonomic grip here will actually help you, but it'll only help you so much. You should try to find cover and stay stationary before you actually sh shoot at your target. Movement only increases the odds of throwing off your aim as you compensate for your movement, but your spread will increase as well. You can strafe as you shoot to make yourself a harder target to hit if you don't have cover, but I would suggest in this moment that you shoot, stop, shoot, stop, etc. until the target's dead. Uh, the basic point is to try and stay stationary before you pull the trigger over medium to longer ranges for best accuracy. If you're moving at all, you, you won't maintain that accuracy. Now, I know that's a lot to digest, but that being said, I will give you some practice if, uh, exercises if you actually wanted to get better. The, I, I will say it though, first off, the best way to get success is to go through the trials and tribulations of getting your ass kicked and you learn through the processes of learning from your mistakes. That's the best way. There's no substitute. But I know a lot of you guys really care about your stats. Uh, so I can give you tips that you can th try out in the test range uh, that can you don't have to worry about your stats. Uh, the best way, like I said, the best way is to do it online, but if you want to build muscle memory outside of it, you can use the test range to shoot at the moving targets, uh, but if that's not good enough for you, what you can do is go to the test range or an empty server, pick an object, and follow the outline of the object. Trace it one way, then trace it the other way, and don't deviate outside or inside the lines as you do so. Another exercise I'd suggest is pick two objects, aim at one, then as quickly as you can, switch to the other. Now try it aiming down the sights, scoping out, then aiming down the sights at the next object. It gives you, This allows you to get better aiming down the sights target acquisition very quickly. Uh, the whole basic, and then you can go from running to aiming, back to running to aiming, crouching as you aiming. Like the, the possibilities and conceivabilities here are endless, but all of them will help you with real life situations when you're in the game. Uh, whatever you can think of, just do it. The whole point of the exercise is to build muscle memory for situations you'll see in game. Uh, so, and that's another tip. If if you're say you're terrible at hip fire encounters and surprise encounters, try hip firing encounters against uh, say a pillar. It's not going to fight back. It's not going to shoot back at you, but it's training you for a situation that someone will be shooting back at you. The whole goal is to just practice situations that you'll encounter in game. But in general, I'd say today, this was just a really, I sort of, these are the tips and tricks that I like to use with regard to improving my aiming. Uh, many of you probably already know these steps, and that's cool. Not everyone's at the same level, so deal with them as you go. Uh, like I said, I'll be covering more advanced tips in the future, such as situational, aware, situational awareness, mini-maps, peaking, cornering, in future videos paired with this information. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you stay tuned for the videos in the future. See you later.